Hi everyone, it's Eugene Lisho. Today I'd like to show you about Cloud Compare's uh, segmentation tools and how you can use those to clean up a point cloud, uh, move some things around, and uh, restructure a point cloud as well. Uh, I think this is, can be very useful in many situations. And I'm also going to show you how to export and then import into Crime Zone software. Um, so uh, you can see I was just importing a file here. It's just a, an intersection. And by default, the point clouds come in with the intensity shown, which is uh, a scalar field. So if I want to shut that off and get the colors back. So with the point cloud highlighted here, I'm just going to scroll down. And where it says scalar field, under scalar field, I'm just going to go none. And that will bring back the, uh, uh, the RGB colors here. All right, so um, so you can see I have an intersection. I'm going to rotate this around a bit, and what I'm going to show you is how we can take one of these cars. I'm going to remove one of these cars from the point cloud, and I'm going to move it. So I'm going to segment it out, and I'm going to move it over into one of the lanes. I don't know somewhere around here. So the way you can do, you do this is by using the segmentation tools. And um, I've noticed that while I'm using the screen recorder, something funny is going on with the selection tool. So I'm just going to stick with the rectangular selection. And there's two options here for segment in and segment out. Um, so I'm just going to click and drag here around the vehicle. And I'm just going to make a rough selection. And I'm going to choose segment out. And I'm going to pull that out. So it'll take a second. And then you'll see up on the, um, the database tree here, um, you can see it's already pulled this out. And I'm going to accept the selection, and you'll see that there's to be a second point cloud here that's available. And when I click this off and on, it's the selection that I made. So what I'm going to do now is, because I have part of the ground around the vehicle selected, I'm just going to unclick everything around the uh, point cloud that I just did. And you can see my rotation point is off, so I'm going to reset that. There's this little crosshair here. Click that. I'm just going to double click on here, and it changes that. And get that back in. So what I'm going to do now is just go to the side. And I'll do this fairly rough, I think, just to get what I need here. Um, and I can see that I picked off some of this higher part of the curve. So, well, it's a good example. I can show you how to clean more of that up. So I'll go back to the top view uh, here. And I'm going to rotate this around a little bit like that. And I'll make this more square now. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure that I have only the point cloud selected that I need you know, to deselect. So just this point cloud. And again, hit the segmentation tool. I'm going to click on the rectangular selection. Click and drag around just the vehicle. Like that. Eh, I don't even like that too much. A little bit more. So I get the mirrors in there. Okay, good enough. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to segment out. I'm going to accept. And uh, you'll see I have two now. So I can remove what was around the vehicle. Uh, the little, little strip there. Okay, now move this sideways. Now I've got a little bit of a better uh, way to make a selection here. Like that. And I'm going to do the same thing. So select this point cloud, hit the segmentation tool, go down and choose rectangular selection, and go up like this and get the whole form. I'm chop off a little bit of the tires, but that's okay. Um, it's just for a demo anyway. And let's see shut this off so I've got just the ground here selected okay which is what I wanted maybe a little bit of the tires but that's fine and you can just see the outline of some of the tires okay so I'm going to turn everything back on this is the vehicle uh, I'll check the vehicle off and I'll turn on everything else back on that I had so you can see I've got some other uh, points here okay that I had segmented out before so with the cloud selected that I want to keep okay I don't want to keep the uh, one that I had before, but I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to hit uh, control click these other ones. So now I've got all three selected. I'm going to fuse these back together. So the overall point cloud and the two little uh, sections. So I'm going to edit, fuse, and it'll take those three and it'll collapse them into one. So now I, what I've got is the whole point cloud, like that. And you'll see the vehicle is still missing here. Okay, it's not there, but I can turn it on just by clicking this here off and on, off and on. Okay, so this is where it gets interesting now. I'm going to go back to my top view, and I'm going to move that car. So I'm going to turn it back on, and I'm going to want to move it to uh, this lane here, okay, in the left lane. Okay, so with the translation tool selected, again, you have to make sure that you have the right point clouds selected, which is just the vehicle. And um, you see that I have some options here for rotation. So right now, if I right-click 
and pan, or it's basically translating, I guess is what it really is, I'm moving the point cloud relative to the other. So I'm going to move it around this part of the lane. And what I want to do is rotate this in just the Z, so I can just drop down and click and rotate in whichever direction I need. And I'm only rotating in Z, so I'm not affecting the other axes. And I can still right-click and pan at the same time. So eh, something like that looks pretty good. And I'm going to accept that. Uh, I'm also going to make that the point of rotation. Uh, just give it a second here. There we go. It's catching up. And you'll see that the vehicle is now uh, on the road. Of course, it's probably going to be higher because the driveway was a little bit higher than the road, and you can see that it is off the ground. So um, that's something that I'll need to fix, and I'll do that right now. So I'll just get a nice, somewhat of a clear view somewhere. Okay, so something like this. That's good enough. Like, let's say like that. And same thing, you know, with uh, the point cloud selected, rotate tools. I'm going to shut off my X and Y uh, translation. I'm only going to translate in Z now. So I'm going to go down like this, and I'll accept that, and now I'll go sideways, and I think you get the idea. You can you can change the axes that you want to rotate around, um, but that's that's sort of the idea of how to move one thing relative to the other, uh, just doing it manually in the screen like that, and how to isolate some of the axes. So when I'm good with that now, I'm going to go down to the top view, and okay, well, it's not really that straight. Now let's fix that. I'm getting picky here, but that's okay. So I'm going to rotate around Z again. I'm just going to straighten that on the lean a little bit, and I'm going to move it in X and Y, just like that. A little bit more rotation. Perfect. Okay. Now with the two selected, and this is where if I try to export this, this is now two uh, point clouds. I want to fuse these back together. So this will be my final state for the point cloud. I'm just going to click on the two, shift click or control click, and one uh, control click. And once I have the two selected, just go to edit and fuse and I believe there's an icon right here as well for fuse and when I do that um, what it does is combines the two together back into one point cloud so if I zoom out you'll see that I only have one bounding box here which tells me I am only have one point cloud selected and the vehicle is in place so that, that's a very useful way to uh, move things around or clean things up um, you know also for cleaning noise and such so you see I, I don't think you know, let me zoom into this you see I've got some noise here uh, there's some other little, uh, you know, points here, the straight points. Let's say, if I wanted to clean those up, you know, same type of thing. I have the point cloud selected. Go to the segmentation tools, and I can just click and drag, um, choose to segment in or out, whatever, and give it a second. Okay, so it left that there, and I'm just going to hit accept, and the noise will just be on another layer. So if I don't want to actually lose it, you can see I shut it off and on there. And you can also rename this. If you double click on these, I can just call this a noise layer or something like that. And I can just shut it off and on. And of course, if I want to just delete it from here, I'm just going to hit delete and it wipes it out from the point cloud. Okay, so now that I've got it all together, exporting is pretty simple. All I got to do is make sure, again, the point cloud is selected. And this is sort of an important point because sometimes you're working with several layers and you'll have one layer selected. Even though it's shut off, you'll be manipulating that layer. So you have to be careful about what you have uh, uh, selected over in this area. Um, but uh, actually, I'll, I'll save this out. I'll save it as a, I'll bring this in here. And I'll just call it uh, modified intersection and uh, .pts. I'll name the extension. I'll just save it to my desktop. I'll save. And it gives you some options for uh, exporting the order and stuff. I just leave it on the default. That's fine. Um, if you're working with something like very large coordinates uh, or uh, geo-reference points, you may want to change the precision uh, or something like that. But again, just leave it the way it is. I'm going to hit OK and this is going to go through and save. And once this is saved out, what I'm going to do is open up Crime Zone and just show you how to import into Crime Zone. And so I'll just pause this and I'll come back in a second. Okay, so it's just completed exporting, and what I'm going to do now is launch uh, Crime Zone and get that going. And um, now, Crime Zone or Crash Zone, it's the same product more or less. And um, uh, what I'm going to do is just choose, uh, I have my units in meters, so I'm going to have an unnamed drawing, and just it's a uh, medium size, so about 91 meters, 300 feet. So I'm just going to hit OK, and I guess I should resize this to the uh, view here. Just give me a second, like that. Okay. Now there will be a second window that we need to open. So here in Crime Zone, 
Um, and for those of you that don't know, Crime Zone is a, a mapping software, so it allows you to bring in total station surveys, allows you to bring in uh, point clouds as well now. So if I go under the 3D button here and go down to point clouds, okay, I'll click on that. A second window opened, and that, that's on my other screen, but I'm going to resize that and bring it in here so you can see what it's going to do. I'll make this a little bit smaller. Okay, so I'm going to open up uh, or load a point cloud data file. And the one that I had before was modified intersection, so I'm going to click on that. Hit OK. Uh, meters is the units. Just click OK. And what it does is converts it to its own format, so a CZP file. So I'm just going to click on OK and uh, let it go here. So this will take a little bit of time. And uh, I'll press pause, and then I will come back once it is complete. But uh, once it is done, it should just be loaded up in the viewport. Okay, so we're back. Uh, that took a, just a couple of minutes, and we're now into Crime Zone. So you see in this window, I've got the same point cloud uh, loaded up. I'm just going to see if I can maximize this in the window here so it's a little bit clearer. And I can zoom in and do some different things. Um, moving around, and I'm use the seat point here. Click on the vehicle and zoom in here. And you can see that the vehicle is still in place, right? That's where we had it. And uh, yeah, we can you know then now start mapping this out and doing some different things. But um, I, just to keep the tutorial uh, short here, I don't want to get into too much into um, crime zone. I'll probably do that in another tutorial video. But this just gives you the uh, ability to move this from one program to the other, the other in PTS format, and um, uh, you know work with the interface here. There's some little things you can do uh, down at the bottom. But between the density of the point cloud, if I turn that way down, you'll see it gets very sparse. Um, if your computer can handle it, I'd like to leave it on. Your point size, so you can increase that, you know, so you can get closer, you still get it filled up. And um, of course, you've got some of the uh, manipulation tools here of zooming in and out and making selections for zoom and such. So you can see it's pretty simple to bring in, uh, import, it imports directly in after a little bit of a conversion. And I think in another tutorial video, I'll show you a little bit more about uh, Crime Zone and Point Cloud here and how we can use this. So thank you very much and hope you enjoyed it.